Hi, welcome. Great to have you to here today. This is chapter three of the book of Acts in the Bible. I'm Brian, and some of you know me. Some of you are new to the channel. Um, I've got. I'm going through the whole New Testament from Matthew right through to Revelation, one chapter at a time. Join me today, and um, we're in the the chapter three, which is titled "Healing the Lame Beggar." So yeah, let's get stuck into it. Chapter 3. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. And when he saw Peter and John go about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to, be, to beg alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Verse 11, Peter's second sermon. While he was clinging to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them at the so-called portico of Solomon, full of amazement. But when Peter saw this, he replied to the people, men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Or why do you gaze at us as it is by our own power or piety? We had made him walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, the one whom you delivered and disowned in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, but put to death the prince of life of whom, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses and on the basis of faith in his name. It is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know. And the faith which comes through him has given him his perfect health in presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your rulers did also. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer he has thus fulfilled. Therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus, that Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. Moses said, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. To him you shall give heed to everything he says to you. And it will be that very, that every soul that does not heed that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And likewise, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and his successors onward also announce these days, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. Okay, that's the end of chapter three of the gospel of, or the book of Acts. Hope you've enjoyed that. So, but please join me next time for chapter four, which is Peter and John arrested. And um, until then, please stay safe, take care, and may God bless your day. Now, I just want to add that in verse 17, we, we read that now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance. I just want to point out, I don't usually do this at the end of the readings, but I want to point out, ignorance is 
a big Christian killer. Ignorance will be no excuse. You know about the Lord. If you don't live like a Christian, live like the Lord tells you, you are being ignorant and that will hurt your chances when the Lord comes to judge, me, judge you at your time. Please just remember that ignorance is no excuse.